Hi everyone, welcome to Hucknall in Nottingham. Great to have your company on this Tuesday evening for the latest hockey chat. Uh, looking back at everything that's gone on this week, plenty of questions have come in once again, so thank you very much for that. Before we start in earnest, can I ask that if you are on Twitter or social media, if you could share the link out, very much appreciate it because uh, we've got a couple of people in at the minute, but obviously want a few more. You've got the chat at the side there so you can interact as we go along. Um, so if you've got any other questions apart from the ones that I'll be discussing hockey related, you can pop them in or if you want to react to anything that I talk about you are more than welcome to do that. So uh, use the chat and we've lost a person. So <laughs> let's give it another 30 seconds uh, so we can try and get a few more people in. I don't really want to be talking to myself on here this evening. Uh, but a lot of really, really good questions have come in. Um, so a lot to discuss. Um We'll be looking at Fife and uh, the, the women's tournament from the weekend. We'll also talk about the Anthony DeLuca suspension. Probably start with that as Ryan has left a question uh, in the chat. So uh, we'll, we'll go straight on to that. Uh, and then a few other bits and pieces around uh, the Panthers and, and the Manchester and Fife series. And uh, a little bit of a... A light-hearted one to finish with later with uh, Panthers Banter putting a question in. So uh, look forward to that one. I'm sure you will. Um, but we will crack straight on. And Ryan's question, which is in the chat there, he says, what do you think of the Anthony DeLuca suspension? Fair or more games should have been handed out? But fair play to him for coming out on Twitter and making a public apology. Yeah, um, I think it was a mature thing to do for him to come out uh, and uh, make an apology to the Sheffield fans and his teammates. Of course, Sheffield already down in import with Tanner Eberle injured. So it puts them in a uh, not a great position by, by him being suspended for two games. Obviously, they didn't really need him on Sunday night with, with uh, them reversing their defeat um, against Guildford from Saturday night. So uh, good, good for them that... Uh, they managed to get along without him, but obviously they played Nottingham on Saturday in the Challenge Cup and he will still be missing. So DeLuca got a two-game ban for kicking. Uh, I think most people will have seen the footage. It was widely shared on social media and uh, it was also on the hockey forum as well. Stupid thing to do. Really stupid, really obvious. OK, it wasn't hard, but remember, if you've got skates on, you've essentially got a blade on your feet. So I think... Looking at the incident, I think the two games was fair enough. No, nobody got injured, but obviously the intent was there. He shouldn't have kicked out. It's a massive no-no in hockey. So I think a suspension was fair. I think two games was fair looking at the incident myself. I had to go and look back at other incidents regarding kicking. Because I remember one from Panthers, and it goes back to 2015, uh, Colby Cohen. Uh, and Cody Brockwell of Belfast during a game at the NIC on the 1st of February in 2015. And um, Colby Cohen kicked out at, at, um, kicked out at Cody Brockwell, who speared Cohen twice. So they both got a one-game ban. Uh, and that was... Cohen's kick was hit with far more force than what DeLuca's was. But it was more of a, a defensive mechanism because... Uh, Cohen was prone on the ice, whereas DeLuca's, he's standing up and he just kicks a netminder for really no reason at all that I can see. I think it was it was a daft thing to do. Um, but I think each incident has to be looked at on its individual merits. And I do think that um I do think that the two games was fair enough, to be perfectly honest. And I know a lot of people were saying, well, what about Lyndon Springer? He's been chucked out of, what is it, th three, four games so far this season. I can sort of understand what we're saying. And we talked about that last week, where maybe there ought to be some sort of totting up system, for, depending on how many penalties you get, which I think is actually a, a, a good idea. But from what I've seen, and I've not seen footage of what he got thrown out for in Manchester against Sheffield in the first game of the season, but 
from everything I've seen since, for me, nothing he has done has been worthy of a ban on its own merits. But I can see why people are asking about Lyndon Springer because he's been chucked out of so many games early on. And if there's some sort of totting up system, I suppose. I think that's mainly what people are probably looking at. Um, but I think every, every incident does have, to be, does have to be looked at on its own merits by uh, DOPS. Uh, what's Kiev say? I think Cohen's kick is the worst of the ones I've seen in the EHL as it's played first, the most dangerous. We're looking back and seeing it only have one game. Yeah, because he certainly, he certainly kicks out with force on that, that Cohen one. Um, but I think you, you could argue he was prone on the ice and there is there some sort of self-defence there, even though it's not the wisest self-defence mechanism. I, I couldn't believe it when I looked at it and it's like, Six over six years ago, I can't believe that's what really surprised me more than anything. Um, but yeah, I think Deluca has been daft, he knows he's been daft, he was big enough to come out uh, and make an apology, but he's hurt his team. Uh, I don't think there's any two ways about that, and I don't think many people can argue that the ban is justified uh, with regards to the length of it. Um, well. Go on, and uh, the next question is around uh, the Five Flyers from Johnny Hill. And he says, what next for the Five Flyers? Are they going down the same route as Edinburgh? Um, I hope not, but their start to the season has not been great, has it? I don't. They've not won a game yet. They've got a, an overtime point from a game against Dundee in the Challenge Cup, but uh, five games in the Challenge Cup, no wins. Uh, I don't think they had a win in pre-season. Very few goals that they're scoring. From reports from what their fans are saying, uh, is just not playing up to a level. And it, it's not looking good for them. Uh, of course, one of the most historic teams in the country. And it, it, it's very, very sad to see them in the position that they are at the moment. I... I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I mean, obviously not seen them play, so it's difficult for me to give an opinion on how they're playing when I haven't seen them play. But the results speak for themselves, don't they? That they are, are not in a good position. And I, I believe their game against Belfast on Friday night, they only had a, about 850 in the building. That's that's not good. That's not good either. Um, so I hope that they're doing something to try and, and turn things around because uh, as it looks at the moment they're finishing in 10th place in the elite league and they're not qualifying for the ne for the next stage of the challenge cup more on that later but um, yeah it's it's not a good situation i need to see them play to get to assess them properly but from the results it's it's not looking good um, at the moment, are changes in the pipeline? Well, obviously, there's restrictions now with regards to import changes, so there's only so much they can do if they want to do it. But I can understand why their fans are so uh, perturbed and why their fans are, are in a bit of an uproar at the moment. Entirely understandable with the way things have started. Uh, and I just hope that, that, that they do come out of it because, uh, like I say, a very historic club. And it would be a shame if they do go down the same route as Edinburgh. But I really hope that they're not. And I really hope they manage to pull themselves out of it. Because uh, I club I love going to, a, club, a place I love to go and watch hockey. Uh, and they've got some great fans as well, a great fan base. Um, so... We should see. Perhaps we might win our third game of three when we visit Scotland. Always a difficult place to play on a Sunday night. It certainly is a difficult place to play at any time. Uh, Fife, great atmosphere in there. And yeah, I, I hope they manage to, to pull themselves through it. Um, next one comes from uh, HockeyFans65-4321. Sent a few questions for you over the past couple of weeks. And he says, what do you think of clubs choosing to keep their own highlights this season? It was much more professional last season when goals were shown on the evening of games by the Elite League rather than put up sporadically by different teams' accounts. Uh, my thoughts. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, 
And, and that was something I was looking for on the first week of the season because, of, of course, the, the Elite League got everything up really, really quickly on the evening of the games, uh, goals from the games. And, and it's something that I really, really liked uh, the, of the Elite League's coverage. And that seems to have gone by the wayside. And uh, I, the standard of uh, certain, well, certainly got going from Panthers, the standard of the highlights seems to have gone rapidly downhill as well, which isn't good. Um, so, yeah, I, I, if you want to portray yourself as a professional organisation, especially when you are sponsored by a, a broadcasting channel, then surely your highlights and, and your video packages that you're putting out need to be on point. But from what I can see, there's no highlight show, which is which I think is ridiculous, frankly, because especially as Premier Sports are the, are the sponsor. And, and I just, just wonder what's going on there. Well, why does it have to be all in-house? Wouldn't it be great if there was some sort of YouTube channel, channel that just pulled it all together? And I, d I don't know what's happening at the Elite League because I thought Luke Fisher did a fantastic job throughout the Elite Series and, and throughout the 1920 season with, with the, how quickly things got, things got out. And that, I know they're still doing the plays of the week and the saves of the week, but... I think one of the things for me was on the evening when you was in the pub or straight after the game, or if it was an away game, you're not watching the webcast, you could see the goal straight away. I think it was a massive selling point. So I'm I'm very disappointed to see the way it has gone. Obviously, it can improve. There's time for it to improve, and I, and I hope it does. But I think it is, it's a backward step, the fact that there's one no pulled together highlight show uh, and two, if that's the case, that the clubs are choosing to to keep their own highlights. I just don't understand the thinking behind that, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, because, I, like I say, it was a great selling point for the league and it was a great exposure for the league that they got everything out so quickly after games uh, in the 1920 season. Um, I don't understand why it stopped. Uh, and if they... Uh, if they are going to bring it back, I really, really, really hope they do. Uh, next question comes from Marco Doherty, who I believe is a Coventry fan, but it's a, around the women's GB team. So he says, not really a question, but your thoughts on the women's GB team playing out of Sheffield, Nottingham, Coventry to help build on the great support from last week. Understand the cheap free ice at Dumfries, but we are never going to attract fans to that venue. A real opportunity to grow the game and generate income for the programme, I feel. So uh, the Women's Olympic Games qualifier was in Nottingham last week. Uh, I was involved in the broadcast of that uh, uh, tournament and it was fabulous. It was a, it was a great week. Um, the girls were so unlucky to miss out just by one goal and uh, you know just one more goal they needed against uh, against Korea and they would have gone through unfortunately not to be but they they gave everything they left everything out on the ice uh, especially as they've had a few training camps but the Korean team have been together for a month in Denmark training so it, it makes their 1-0 result against them an even better result for me especially as Korea are in the division above but the crowd was fantastic. 1,700 there on Sunday, the biggest uh, women's game attendance in the UK, which is phenomenal. Uh, it was loud. It was louder than, than a lot of Panthers games I've been to uh, on, on Sunday night. It was, the atmosphere was fantastic. And it was great. But uh, go, going to what you say, Mark, Sheffield, Nottingham, Coventry. Coventry's probably a, a possibility because of the, the capacity. Nottingham, um, because it was a tournament, I think it, it was a good place and it was great exposure, especially with it being on free sports as well. However, Nottingham is not going to be cheap to hire. Sheffield Arena, the same. I Sheffield, probably more realistic. And I see what you're saying about Dumfries, but Dumfries are fantastic at hosting these events because they've done it so often. Um, but you're right about the exposure. What they need, though, is more TV coverage because the exposure that the women's team will have got from having that coverage over the over the past week will, will have been far more than they've ever had before. 
the World Championships, when it was in Dumfries, that was covered on free sports as well, which is, again, more exposure. They've never been on TV before, apart from last week and the Dumfries tournament. The thing is, they only play, really, in the Olympic qualifiers every four years and the World Championships every year, once a year. So they're not really playing friendlies against other countries. And it was something that... Angela Taylor, who's former GB women's captain and who was co-commentating with me on the afternoon games. Uh, and she had great insight on this because she, she was saying that the other teams in Europe can just hop on a bus and go to another country and play a player friendly. With us being an island and money not exactly being flush within the women's game, um, it's not that easy to arrange friendlies. So that's the difficulty you've got to look at as well. Also, the World Championships are going to go along to different countries, so it's not going to be in GB all the time. So the thing it needs, it needs investment, it needs, it needs money. The thing is, where is that money going to come from? But they have had a fantastic amount of exposure, like you say, uh, Mark, and it, there, there is an opportunity to grow the women's game from everything that happened last week, and it, it was so good, so good to be a part of, so good to see. The games were really enjoyable. The, if anybody saw the Iceland um, Slovenia game on Sunday afternoon, that was an absolute joy to commentate on. It was a great game of hockey, so really exciting. And then you had the GB game in the evening, which was just so tense, so exciting, and you know, it, it was just phenomenal. I think the problem is you, you do get some people who, who go to a women's game probably expecting it to be like men's hockey. It's not. The rules are different. There's no checking in women's hockey. But I think if you if you go with the with the mindset of not ex expecting of a, not expecting che a checking game, you'll really enjoy it. I, I love covering the women's game. The women's nationals are one of my favourite events to commentate on and, and go to. Um, so, yeah, if you can get to a women's game, go down, give, give them support. Go and have a look. We've got the Vipers in Nottingham. I'm sure they would really love some support in the stands because I don't think they get too many going through. And I don't think you have to pay anything to get in and watch either. Uh, I'm sure someone will correct me on that. So, so go, go down, find your local women's team and go and give them some support because that will help as well. And they will also show that the interest has been developed from having them on TV and having the tournament in this country. Um, but they were fantastic to watch. They, I thought they did as proud. Uh, and it was great to see uh, see every single one of them give everything. Uh, what's that? I think it was Mark Rack, Rackham from, uh, who said to me that so, with some targeting of resources, GB women could make an Olympics and get eyes on the sport in all forms here. And a valid argument, I think. And they've clearly got the ability to give it a run. They have. Um, they do. They will need some investment because, realistically, the way you look at it, they're still in the. I think the Division One B of the World Championships. They may even be two A, which is third or fourth tier. So they've got some progress to make. I think before the the Olympics is is a more realistic opportunity. But I think that. If they'd have got through to the next qualifying round, I think that would have got a few eyes on them. It would have been very, very difficult to make it to the Olympics. But I think getting to that final qualifying round where winning the group gets you to the Olympics, um, yeah, that, that would that would have been good. I think they probably got a better chance of making it than maybe the men's team have at the moment, but they need investment and they need support. And without that, I think they're going to struggle, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yes, there's definitely the ability to give it give it a run. But all of these girls, I think, are either in full-time education or, or work full-time. So then it's finding the time and, and, and being, uh, being able to compensate them for, for not working or not studying and investing the time of being together. And I think that's a struggle, and that's everything that's thing that has to be worked out. And I think that's across all levels of Great Britain, not just the women, but um, that's something that, that does need addressing very, very quickly, I think. Okay, we will move on. Uh, Richard Bradley, 
Panthers fan asks, does Will Curling have enough experience and ability to be backup netminder for a full Elite League season? He was back up for Sheffield for, for, for a full season, but I think they had two. Yes, they did have two important netminders ahead of him. Um, I was delighted on Saturday. I, I was working in Darlington, so I, I didn't go to the game. But I was delighted to see he got the start um, because I think in the Challenge Cup, Challenge Cup being the type of competition it is this season, it, you can give him stars. And I was delighted to see him won. I remember chatting to him in Lithuania at the Under-20 Championships when he was playing in Sheffield and he'd not had a lot of ice time that season. And he'd probably not had his greatest performances in Lithuania. But he was rusty. He'd had very, very little competitive match action. And I think that's what he needs. The only way he's going to get experience and get the ability to be, to be good enough is if he gets the experience to play. He's, he's now had, that was his first elite league start, his first elite league competition start on Saturday. So he needs more of it to get better and get that experience. But what a way to start with a 3-1 victory. Uh, and he, he made a few good saves from from what I was told, and he did certainly uh, didn't look out of place. So that is the thing to do. The only way you are going to get these netminders' experience is if you actually play them. So I, I think uh, he he doesn't have the experience clearly because of, of one game, but I think he has the ability to be a backup for for a full elite league season. And the thing is, if he's given more starts and he gets more wins, his confidence is only going to grow. So, so I would hope hope to see that on Saturday night in Sheffield, he gets the start again. I'd like to see him get the start for the rest of the Challenge Cup group games. Because let's face it, they're not exactly that important with only one team going. And I'll come on to that now because Robert Jenner asks, what is the point of the Challenge Cup group stages? 36 group games to lose one team is ridiculous. And uh, he, he's not wrong. Uh, I spoke about this uh, a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, I just, surely there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. You've got three groups. Of, they're playing 36 group games between them and one team misses out. So th Two of those groups of three, they'll all qualify. What is the point? What is the point of them playing each other? And you can say, oh, well, it's about seedings. What? The quarterfinals are two-legged anyway. So what does it matter? I think they've really, really dropped a ball with the Challenge Cup this season. Because it's the most ridiculous, ridiculous way to play that many games to lose one team. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If you was going straight to semi-finals, I'd agree. But then they're going to say, oh, well, but then the teams miss out on the payday. And it's like, oh, God. But, but what, about the, what about the competition? What about the, the sort of integrity of that competition? It's ridiculous. It, just, it's, it makes me want to pull what remaining hair I have out it it's just it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever uh, and robert's right 36 group games to lose one team is absolutely ridiculous it needs a massive rethink the challenge cup because it's a great trophy it's a great competition to win you you have to play a lot of games to win that trophy make it a competition worthy of of winning because let's face it in this group stage the teams don't really have to try that hard, do they? If one's going to lose out. I mean, you, you can probably say the, the, the three teams who are in trouble are probably Manchester, Fife and maybe Coventry. But Manchester and Fife, certainly. You know, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. And it makes me angry because the competition deserves so much better than that. So much better. But it, it, it needs a massive rethink for me, a massive, massive rethink. And I hope they have one before, before next season. Uh, Hockeyfan6543211 six, six, with another question. Is how, who do you think wins the series between Manchester and Fife this week weekend? Important series. 
in Manchester on Saturday, in Fife on Sunday. Two, the two teams who are both struggling at the minute. Um, I think on goal scores, I think Manchester take both games at the minute. And looking through the rosters, um, and I'm, I'm currently looking at the Manchester ro uh, roster because I'm, I'm doing some stuff for blindside cards. The Manchester roster is, is actually pretty decent on paper from, from looking through it. So I'm quite surprised that they've started as, as badly as they have. Um, but I think they have the ability to come good. So I, I think Manchester take both them games. I don't think five. I think five are very low on confidence. Um, they've got a great netminder in Shane Owen. Let's, let's not forget that. He, he is a superb netminder. Uh, Manchester as well with, with Matt Ginn. Great netminder. So it could become a battle of those two, I think. Um, but for me, at the moment, out of that series, Manchester take both games. So uh, that, that is where I am swaying. Um, that's where I'm swaying towards uh, of that, that matchup for, for uh, this Saturday and Sunday. Jack Walker, Panthers fan, says, how do you think we'll do this weekend in Sheffield? It's Challenge Cup, so... Yeah. Well, well, Sheffield, Sheffield are better than us on paper. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. The, the Sheffield are better than the Panthers on paper this season. Um, but we went there and won in pre-season, so that will give the team some confidence. They're going to be one, definitely import down in Deluca, possibly two if Eberle doesn't recover. They're two important players for them. But Panthers have got their own injury, injury worries, so I think it depends how many bodies we can get back as well. Um, like I say, I would like to see Will Curling start that game because, you know, I mean, both teams have four points in that group. Manchester don't have any. So is it really, is it really that important? I mean, I, I'm not going because I don't have, I'm not going to, I don't plan to go to any Challenge Cup group games because I, I don't see the point. You saw my anger when talking about that last question. So, um, so as far as that goes, I think, I think if, if I was asked to put a bet on it, I think Sheffield would win because I think they, on paper, they are better than us, a bit more depth than us, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, you can never really predict predict those games, um, but like I say, the, the important thing for me is I, I think that Will Curling gets a start, especially as it's against his old team, and he probably thinks he may have something to prove against them as well. Um, Craig Bond says, with a few more players starting to find the net, do you think the team is gelling and starting to find their way and winning, even though we do not have a few players? Also, how good is Morgan Clark Pizzo? He's coming on no end. Uh, Clark Pizzo doing really well. Uh, has looked good from from what I've heard uh, when he, he when he was icing in Manchester and also uh, getting several shifts this weekend, along with Jack Hopkins, which I was very pleased to hear about. He was getting a few shifts. Um, nice to see Sir Antra and Lane find the net, um, and you say. MCP looks looks and is the business so far. I know he's been doing very well for tell uh, for Peterborough and scoring a lot of goals. Bailey Harewood as well. I think, is that is he two hat tricks for the bees? I think so far this season. So he, he's had a great start to the season. Um, but yeah, Clark Pizzo's come in and he's doing a great job for Peterborough. And obviously he'll bring that confidence into the Panthers team when he plays. Um, I think Panthers have first call on him because uh, last not this last weekend, the weekend before, he uh, was playing for the Panthers when Peterborough had a game, which suggests which suggests that uh, Panthers have first call. Happy to see Hopkins get a first Panther start. Yeah, I think Jack Hopkins is the number one prospect in the country. Um, brilliant player, great goal scorer, but don't. Bring him in and play him on the fourth line. I've said this before. You have to play. You have to play him in in a role where he's going to score goals. He's a natural goal scorer. He's a natural assist maker. Great forward, but he has to be in in those positions. So um, yeah, how good could he be for Panthers? I think personally, I think he needs to be aiming higher than Panthers because 
Um, I think he has the ability to play at a much higher level than the Elite League from what I've seen of him so far. I, th I think he's that good. So, I, I, if he plays for Panthers, great. And I think he could be a great, great forward, great British forward for us. But I think he, I think he, he should set his sights higher than the Elite League. I think he's good enough to do it. I think he's good enough to play at a higher level in the European League or maybe even North America. So delight for Jack Hopkins, though they can't do what Sheffield did to Aaron now. He's not a checking line forward. No, he's not. He's definitely not a checking line forward. Uh, he needs to play where he has the opportunity to put the puck in the net because that's his natural game and that's where he's most dangerous. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's good to see Hopkins and, and Clark Pizzo getting ice time uh, and Will Curling as well. Uh, I think as regards to your question about Panthers, I think they are gelling. It's nice to see us score a few more goals as well. We, we scored a, lot, uh, a few in Manchester, uh, three against Manchester this, this week. Um, I still think we're lacking a bit of quality compared to other teams in certain areas. But one thing that I do utterly trust uh, Guy Dissette and Tim Wallace are, on is that they don't necessarily have the best players, they have the right ones. And I think they will all, we, we certainly have no coasters from, from what I've watched so far, which is something that you probably could level at Panthers teams of the past. Certainly not any ones that uh, Tim Wallace has cha taken charge of. They work hard uh, and they play as a team. And that's all you can ask for. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and we'll see see how uh, things progress as the season goes on. At Mr. Pack 75 asks, from what you've seen so far, what do you think our chances are this season of winning the league? I've got to be honest, I think they're slim. Uh, for reasons that I've said, I think on paper, Belfast are better, Sheffield are better, Cardiff are better. Coventry pretty much took us apart the other Saturday. Um so, and like I said, I think we, we do probably lack a bit of quality compared to those other teams. Um, that's not Tim Wallace and Guy Doucette's fault. That'll be the fault of whoever's setting the budget. Because if, if we're not getting a budget that is comparable to the likes of Cardiff, Sheffield, Belfast, how are we going to compete? But I think Gigi Set and Tim Wallace will put have, have put together the best team they have, can for the budget. And because they get a team playing for them, don't be surprised if we sort of challenge or, or are on the cusp. But honestly speaking, uh, from what I've seen at the moment compared to other teams, I don't think we've got a, a great chance. I think we're slow. It, the chances are slim. But I think we'll give it everything. I think that team will give it everything, but I think we just lack that bit of quality compared to other teams, which is my honest opinion on it so far. I hope they prove me wrong, but and, and like I said, we'll see as the season goes on. But other teams have just got that little bit more for me, Belfast especially, who look, who look very good. Final question, Panthers banter, and this is a nice white height at Heart of One. He says, what's the best food you've had at a UK ice hockey rink? And uh, there was a, pri a reply from my good friend Scooby at the Hall, who says, if he doesn't say Hall chip spice, he's lying. Well, you're going to think I'm lying, because as much as I did like the, the chips with chip spice in Hall, I'm going to have to say the best food I've had at a UK ice hockey rink is at the Newcastle Arena when the Vipers used to play there. Can everyone remember who went there? Remember the hog roast? That was cracking grub. Cracking hockey grub. Uh, I had one every time I went up there. So uh, that is certainly uh, the best for me. I've never had a stovey. I'm not a big fan of, of uh, corned beef. So that's why, I, I, that's why I, I can't really give an opinion on a stovey, I'm afraid. But yes, for me. The hog roast at uh, at Newcastle Arena, absolutely delightful. Um, okay, uh, I've been going thirty five minutes, so pop any further things you want to discuss or anything comments you want to make about what's been discussed so far in the next um, minute or so. Um, uh, what to tell you? Obviously, 
few more games this weekend. Best hockey food barn on the food at the Jap Eden Barn in, in Amsterdam. Awful hockey, amazing food. Um, I've never seen I've never seen hockey in the Netherlands, unfortunately. Uh, one place I would like to go. Oh, the the, the Bratwurst at Krefeld in Germany as well. Oof, that was that was spot on as well. If you've ever been to watch the DEL. They know what they're doing with sausages in Germany. I will say that much. <laughs> All right. Any, any final questions before before I clear off? Uh, just to remind you that I will be back next week. Not sure what day. I'll try and keep it consistent to the same day, but obviously thing, things may change around. But I'll try, try and keep it to a Tuesday, if not hopefully a Monday and at the latest a Wednesday. Um, but uh, I will be back next week. And if you have any questions during the week that you think of, feel free to send me a message on Twitter or by DM or, or just at me in at John O'Ballard or uh, you know, any other way you can get hold of me. I'm more than happy to take questions during the week and then I'll just save them for uh, for the week after. I make a note of them and keep them. So uh, feel free to ask it anytime as long as you don't do wednesday at 8 p.m then i won't have to say the balls well i'm, I'm going to keep at nine because it is better for me so i will never clash with you anthony yeah just a reminder anthony does the uh, what's current stream banners on the wall for, for all your nhl news and uh discussion it's a great show so join him for that at banners otw on twitter that's at 8 p.m tomorrow so uh do Show Anthony your support and uh, and go along and watch that tomorrow night. But I think that's it from me tonight. No more questions coming in. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your company as always. It's great to have you uh, back. It's great to be talking about hockey once again. And I will be back next week and I'll speak to you then. Take care. Have a good week and I'll see you soon.